creating space and opportunities for advanced thinking is um, somewhat of a challenge sometimes for us because we're used to breaking things down as teachers and um, part of the expert of teacher is to how to simplify ideas so people can understand them. And so you're having to turn it around and think of a way of asking questions that can engage kids with ideas that um, doesn't do that. So it does take some practice and again, having a few examples to build on is um, really effective. But what I've noticed is, so for the physics investigation, which was our first attempt at this, I did some of that early thinking and um, about making decisions. But our second attempt, which is through the carbon cycle, um, it's very much led by Geraint. And the ideas that the students, the things that students are working on now, um, he's come up with himself. And so it shows quite quickly, actually, once you get into it, it becomes almost second nature to go, oh yeah, this is what we need to do. A standard way of asking about the carbon cycle would be, um, okay, explain to me how the process of photosynthesis works, or it might be list all the different processes that are involved in the carbon cycle. Now, um, Geraint had a couple of sort of straightforward questions like that, but then the real key was his third question, which was he put four um, different processes of the carbon cycle, and he said, in your peers, you need to discuss which one of these you think is the most important and why. Now, there is no right answer to that question, but the discussion itself, um, when we were watching around the classroom and listening, the debate that was going on about the different sort of, oh no, this is more important because, and so they're having to really think and engage with the ideas, and the knowing what it means, they pick up along the way. Uh, the response of the students has been really positive. Um, there's been a lot of healthy debate, and uh, just a lot of really positive discussion, um, and also the feedback. Um, they've. Many of them have provided really positive and constructive criticism and feedback to each other. I think the results from the program, just I think just seeing some of the changes in some of the students, I think providing a setting where they're able to discuss with each other um, has actually given, I guess, the quieter or shyer students a voice um, to actually be able to explain their ideas. And um, I think I've been able to see growth, um, especially with their ability to actually explain uh, what they're writing or um, and just yeah give more ideas. I reckon it gives us a different perspective of um, how we learn because it's, it's always the teacher teaching us and giving us the layout and the teacher normally decides but the um, authority is given to the student I guess it helps us learn more to um, feel what it is to um, decide and make choices yeah. High expectations teaching, um, once the students have been exposed to it, it increases their confidence. Um, it certainly seems to increase their engagement because they're um, not passive learners, they're much more active. And the results are starting to sort of show that definitely they're achieving at higher levels than they would have done previously. And But I think the self-belief is starting to come through, which is pretty exciting. Uh, applying this technique going forward, I think the key thing is consistency. I think um, setting aside time, uh, I think in terms of planning, just setting aside time uh, for each lesson. Um, I think a lot more discussion um, and also I think one of the big things is probably less is more, so the less I think the more the students think. So um, I think you kind of get caught up sometimes in uh, trying to fill them with knowledge, um, but the knowledge for a lot of them is actually within them. Um, so it's just a matter of getting that out.